Shalom Yisrael. Um, I've been meaning to make this particular video for quite some time now. Um, I want to explain why I'm no longer a Christian for those who don't know what I am. Um, I have many friends on Facebook who knew me as a Christian and uh, can't figure out what I am. I'm going to tell you what I am and why I'm no longer a Christian. Uh, first of all, I want to say this out the door so that there is no misunderstanding about what what it is we're into okay um, we still use the Bible okay the Bible is still the book that we use um, for whatever it is we classify ourselves as I want to say too that we are a part of no religion whatsoever okay many people have founded their whole faith and belief on religion denominations and Christianity okay and that's something we, d we decided not to do any longer. Um, and what that means is this, okay? Many of you think that the basis of your journey in this world is through Christianity. You've never researched Christianity, and you think that if you take that title from yourself, that you are destined and doomed to hell. So you're saying, let me, let me ask you this, if you do almost all the same things that you're doing right now, but you decide, I'm not going to call myself a Christian anymore, you think that the Most High is going to say, oh, since you took that name Christian off of yourself, that I'm going to send you to hell. That's, that's the basis of how many people think. They think that everything of heaven and earth revolves around Christianity, but they have never done the research to determine where Christianity came from. Okay? We are going to do... Um, an in-depth in study, as a matter of fact, White It Out Part 3 uh, deals with a lot of the origins of Christianity, which is very important for people to understand this. Christianity is just another religion, people, okay? Serving our Father shouldn't have anything to do with whether or not you call yourself a Christian, okay? Now, let me get off of that and explain to you why I'm no longer a Christian. You see, one day I decided to get in the Bible. Okay, the book that Christians told around because they think uh, that's the book of Christians. The Bible is a book of the Israelites. Most of the writings in that book came from the Israelites. Okay, and so for you to think that it's magically a Christian book, I will say this much. Christianity comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, okay, that's where it comes from in its current state. But prior to Christianity, there is an origin even before Christ was born. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. My husband's going to cover the rest of this, okay? Uh, we gonna, we'll dive into that later. But you all who call yourselves Christians, you have taken on the attitude that any other belief or faith outside of Christianity is a ticket to hell. And you are so misinformed on that, okay? That's because that's the way you have been taught and you've been trained to believe this. I want you to understand one thing, that I love the Father, okay? And I am filled with His Holy Spirit, His Ruach, okay? None of that has changed. I still pray to the Father, but I decided that I'm going to use His Hebrew name. And many of you take offense to that, you take offense to the fact that I want to use the name that he was originally getting and not some translated name that the Roman Catholics assigned to him. You actually believe that if you don't use the name that was assigned to him 150 years ago, that you're wrong. This is what you all have been taught, and, and you, you think that there's no power in his real name to the point where you'll argue someone up and down about using the Hebrew name. The sad thing about this, this Christian walk is I've asked some Christians, one in particular was 60 years old, I asked um, what language was the Bible originally written in? You'd be surprised the number of people who think that the Bible was originally written in English. So many people believe that it was written in English, and so therefore, that's their excuse for disregarding the Hebrew language that it was written in, okay? I decided, our family decided that we were going to detach ourselves from any type of religion, especially Christianity, because that's what we were raised in, okay? We are not knocking the truth, 
okay? The truth of the matter is, many Christians don't even know what the truth is. Even if it came up and bit them in the behind, they wouldn't know what it is. And when you try to tell them to tell you, when you try to explain the truth to them, they fight you tooth and nail. Let me give you one very shining example, okay? And this is a, is a simplistic example, okay? I say it's a, a simplistic example because most people identify Christianity with a particular image and a particular people. Um, as being the original people of the Bible. I have a few friends from my previous Christian church on Facebook that um, have used the white Jesus image as their profile picture, uh, or they'll share it saying, if he died for your sins, um, type amen, or um, if he came knocking at your door, what would you do, and all this different stuff. And whenever I respond, to those images and tell them that it's incorrect. I had one brother actually tell me that I'm deceived. He said, I'm deceived if I think the color and race mattered. I'm deceived, but yet you the one got this white man with his arms stretched wide and he ain't died for nobody, okay? But I'm the one deceived. So it's deception for me to suggest that this is not what the man looked like. And I even dropped the scripture in Maccabees where it says the heathen was going to paint the, like, paint the likenesses of their images. So I'm sitting back telling you that the scripture tells you that this is the likeness of a heathen image that has been circulated around the world. But you're telling me I'm deceived. And you don't even want to find out why you're deceived. You want to just believe that I'm stirring the pot of hate and racism. But it wasn't racist and hateful for you to spread this image that has been used to enslave, torture, and maim us. They use that to justify doing everything that they've done to us. And I got this black man telling me that I'm the one who's deceived. Okay, then I, you know, I got several other people saying to me that um, the, the message is what matters, not the image. But you never see them post anything looking like themselves. It's always the white image. You know, then, you know, the movie Son of God, you know, they were talking about how it's the message that counts. They're, they're using white images to portray the Son of the Most High. And they're telling me that I'm the one who's making a big deal out of something. If it didn't matter, if his race did not matter, then why did Europeans decide to change it to the likeness of their image? And they got us as a people spewing off that same garbage that the race don't matter, but we're sharing their images. We're talking about their savior, okay? This painted image of theirs who didn't die for nobody, okay? Now, that is not the reason why I'm not a Christian. I'm, I've decided that paganism has no place in my life. <laughs> and that's what Christianity is. It's a pagan religion. And for those of you who just who just want to stay stuck on what you've already learned and you want to reject knowledge the scripture says because my people rejected knowledge i will reject them and their children it also says that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge <sighs> i'm telling you if you were to do the research that we have done you should come back with the same conclusion that you don't have to call yourself a christian in order to be a servant of the most high yah the Most High has been so good to us. He has shown us so many things. That's because we opened up our, our mind and we, we sought knowledge. We said, Father, we want to know. We don't want to be engulfed in any deception any longer. And so he says, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. That's what we did. We sought and we have found. We knocked and he opened the door unto us. But if you want to sit there in your drunken stupor in these dens of sin that you call churches and wallow in this mess, this mega mess that they've created, then there is something else coming out of the gate over there. Okay, because the Most High says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues and punishments because it's coming, y'all. If you all don't come out of this Babylonian church system, there's a punishment waiting for you. Okay. I'm not telling you to stop praying. I'm not telling you to stop fasting. I'm not telling you to stop praising the Most High Yah. What I'm telling you is to seek the truth. Okay? What I'm telling you is to stop with this nonsense. <coughs> because the enemy 
has deceived our people for so long that it's hard for them to break away from the nonsense. This nonsense has literally torn families apart. And you don't know how, but it has. When you look at the infiltration of sin in the churches, in the camps, right now, you can go to almost any church in America and you can see a homosexual sitting over on the piano or the keyboard. You can see a lesbian directing the choir. You can see a pastor who's uh, fondling little boys. Okay? And what do the people say? Pray for him. Pray for her. They are children of God. Don't judge them. That ain't what the scripture said. The scripture says, He that is spiritual judgeth all matters. And it also says, Know ye not that ye shall judge kingdoms? When it says don't judge, it says, You that doeth the same. Meaning, you are waddling and seeing and mess. Okay? And you're telling somebody else not to do it. Okay? It's saying, Don't judge a person when you are doing the same. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who's turned away from their sins because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. I'm talking about a person who's doing ABC right now and telling you not to do ABC. That is a person who is not in a position to judge. But the scripture says, he that is spiritual judges all things. So to tell me not to judge you because you got a faggot sitting on the piano, okay? And you got a lesbian directing the choir. And you have a pastor who's sleeping with every woman in the church. Don't tell me not to judge because the Most High says this is wrong, it's foolishness, it's folly, and everybody that's sitting up under this mess, you're going to be judged. Okay? So it's high time for our people to wake up out of this Christian sleep that they're in and begin to, I'm going to move this over a little bit because it's getting kind of dark in this spot, but it's high time for our people to wake up out of this Christian mess and this Muslim mess too. Islam is a deception to our people too. We need to be serving the Most High outside of these religions. We don't need a titled religion to serve our Father. You understand that? And so with Christianity, I'm dealing with that one in particular and not so much Islam because I came out of Christianity. And there are so many deceptions in Christianity to where you got people sitting up in it defending it. The same people that say leave the gay organist or piano player alone and the, the gay choir director and the, the homosexual um, pimp and pastor alone. Those same people that say leave them alone and pray for them will look at you for using real wine and communion and declare that you own your way to hell. You hear what I'm saying? These same hypocrites that will allow their children to wallow in all types of worldly mess day in and day out um, women coming up in the church with spanks on and you can see the crack of their behind got their cleavage busting all down here and uh, everything popping out these same women will look at you because you, I actually had a woman do me like this before. We were in the grocery store. My husband was sitting there waiting on me as I was at the checkout line. And this, this sister was looking me up and down like, who does she think she is? And she didn't have no smile on her face either. Don't even know me, but you sitting there looking me up and down like, who the heck do this woman think she is? I don't think I'm nobody, okay? For the record, I don't think I'm nobody. But for you to look at me with utter detest like that, you know, and even um, the store around here now, there's this one sister that we're always so like polite to and speaking to her and she look at us like hi like what are you speaking to me for but the, the white person behind us when it's they turn boy she just bubble over with joy when she started talking to them it's, it's funny how people don't think you notice that kind of stuff and I say to myself we so sick in our heads that these people that enslaved us and handed us Christianity on a plate we love the ground they walk on but somebody that looks like us, and I'm going to tell you right now, I love my people. I can go to that sister right now and tell her, sister, I love you. I can give her the biggest hug she will ever receive and say, look, sister, I love you. And so I don't understand why we have this utter hatred for each other. That's because Christianity has taught us that we are the slaves, they are the masters. And that is what we're supposed to live by. So we have no respect for each other, but we have all respect and love for them. And we don't even, we don't even live according to what this Bible says. 
Most Christians don't even pick their Bible up to read it, enough to know anything. So how can you claim to be anything close to the Most High when you ain't even living for Him? You don't even know what His Word says. My thing is this, if you know something, then show it. If you think you know the Bible, show it. Most Christians that you talk to about anything in the Bible, they say these words, you don't know what I know. Yes, I do. I, I can see you living it. Your life tells me what you know and what you don't know. Your life should testify of you. And if your life is testifying of somebody who don't have a relationship with the Father, then that's what I see, okay? And I'm not judging you in a harsh way. I'm just telling you reality because we are supposed to judge these things. We are supposed to be able to bring truth and light to our people, okay? None of this is said to bring division or cause division. It's all said in love. I'm just saying you need to reevaluate what you think you know because, again, even with prophecy, end-time prophecy, most Christians couldn't tell you nothing about end-time prophecy. And the one sister that I deal, I have dealt with constantly, I don't know if you're going to see this, sister, but... I keep trying to make a point to you that end time prophecy is so important and knowing who you are as a, as a people, who, knowing who we are as a people is so important because end time prophecy is wrapped around the real Israelites. It's tied up and tangled up in us. And if you don't have your eyes set on the right people, you're going to get it all confused and you ain't going to know what's going down. And so when I talk to you about end time prophecy and you can't elaborate on it, that is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm referring to. And it's time for us as a people to stop rejecting knowledge and come into the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is this, that this world as we know it is about to change. And Christianity is not preparing you for that. Christianity creates a dependency on leadership, on pastors. Now, we do need pastors, but when you look in the scripture, most things that it says about pastors is bad. It says things like, woe unto you shepherds, or woe unto you pastors who scatter my sheep. You have pastors out here leading you all sheep to the slaughter. They're not preparing them for anything. They're not telling them to walk away from their sins. They're not telling them to come back to the Most High. They're not telling them that they need to pray fast, seek them. They're telling them season, harvest, breakthrough, and favor. They're telling them, hey, come to choir practice so we can do, practice our praise dance, so we can do this. We're going to have another conference. We're going to sell the tickets for $150. Uh, bless the pastor with all of this. Everybody try to match his age. Um, everybody bring the pastor this love gift. Bring him that love gift. Ain't telling them nothing else. The truth of the matter is the truth is being glossed over. It's being hidden. The, the truth is being hidden under a bushel. And what we see happening right now is all of this focus on entertainment. The church, the Christian church, is entertaining the Most High's people right now because they want to be entertained. It's rare that you'll hear somebody give you a message that's going to heal your soul. Most of the Christian church gives you what your soul wants to hear. And if you knew scripture, you would understand that it said that most of you are going to heap unto yourselves false prophets that will give you what your itching ears want to hear. That's what's going on in the Christian church. The, the pastor is tickling your itching ears. You want to hear somebody tell you that you can do whatever you want to do and still make it into the kingdom. You want to hear somebody tell you that you can have three or four um, or five boyfriends um, and, and still make it into the kingdom. You still want somebody, you want somebody to tell you that you can wear whatever you want in the so-called house of Yah and still make it into the kingdom. And so Christianity has been downgraded to a low level. Okay? And that's because its origins were not founded on anything solid. Okay? You have women up in the church. I had a conversation with a so-called evangelist. This woman was 50-something years old at the time that I had this conversation with her. And that old come as you are message is played out. Okay? She said, 30-something years ago, I came as I was. I had my miniskirt on and they didn't put me out. Ain't nobody saying put you out. Somebody, all I was saying to the woman is that ain't nobody dumb that's walking up in the church with her, her breast hanging out and a miniskirt on. Th that woman ain't dumb. She's doing exactly what she want to do. 
because that same woman would not go to a Fortune 500 company for a job interview looking like that because she knows she will not get that job. But the folk want to play dumb when it comes time to come to church and they want to say, well, I'm coming as I am. And you you're up there with your breasts hanging out and your butt sticking out and, and, and you want to fall out all out on the floor so people can be all over you and stuff. And, and, and anytime somebody got to come and throw a blanket over your behind to cover you up, you knew what you were doing. And, and Christians, I used to be afraid to say stuff like this because, you know, the, all that stuff in love and kindness have I drawn thee. No, the Most High says, cry aloud, spare not, and lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and show my people their, their transgressions. That is what we're supposed to be doing. We are not supposed to coddle people in their sins. It's time out for that mess. Time is running out, y'all. So it's time to get it together. It's not time for us to keep playing this thing. We're playing games, y'all. The Most High is sick and tired of his children playing games. You have to, got to come up out of this stupor that you're in and stop making excuses for sin. You have got to stop making excuses for doing the wrong thing. And this Christian church is causing people to go backwards, backwards, backwards. I will say this. When I was coming up in the Christian church, the churches that I attended, okay, I'm not saying they were perfect. As a matter of fact, they were far from it. Many, a lot of mess came out of those churches. In which I'm not going to dive into that right now, but back then there was a standard of holiness that many of us live by. You couldn't come up in the church looking like no streetwalker. You couldn't come up in the church looking like no pimped out thug. But see, right now, you got boys coming up in the church with skinny jeans. You got girls coming up in the church with belly shirts, with belly button shirts, and with pierced on the navel and all kinds of stuff. And you expect people to sit up in the congregation of the Most High with your body parts all in their face. This is what you all expect. And you call this righteous and holy. And how dare you say something against people who come, they, at least they're in the church, the church is the hospital. Come on, y'all, with this foolishness. You know that ain't right. That is a bunch of foolishness. Those are some of the main reasons why I left Christianity because I was tired of the lies. I was tired of hearing the same message spun around over and over and over and over and over. The same message spun around 50 million different ways. It was never meant for you to sit up in the church for 30, 40, 50 years and not be able to go out and spread the good news to somebody else. Everybody's sitting up. That's why the scripture says, ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. You are stuck in a stupor. You are stuck in a never learning situation. You're not learning. You're not coming into the knowledge of truth, the truth. You're always in the state of feed me, feed me. You're like a baby. A baby is always wanting to be fed. Feed me, feed me. I need some food. You're supposed to grow up. Who told you that you weren't supposed to grow? The scripture says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior or our master and Savior, Yahushua. We were supposed to grow. We weren't supposed to stay there. But since people aren't growing, what the Christian church has done is say, okay, the people ain't getting nothing. We ain't feeding them. We're giving them the same message just regurgitated over and over. So um, I know what we'll do to keep them. We'll entertain them. We'll la-di-da around the church and we'll sing and ha ha We'll do all this stuff. We'll bump around on the um, drums and the piano and we'll just keep them happy. We'll, we'll send them on retreats for this, send them on retreats for that, have this, this thing going on, have this youth thing. All of this stuff is a big ball of mess. Youth pastors, all of this stuff. Youth pastors raping girls and raping boys and all kinds of stuff. And y'all call that of the Most High. And you want to sit back and judge me because I said, look, I'm one of the children of the Most High and I'm going to serve him and him alone. I'm not going to serve Christianity. I'm not going to serve a pastor. You want to call me the lost one, the deceived one. No, you that are sitting up in Christianity, you are the ones that are deceived, okay? And all I'm saying to you is to lay aside that weight and that deception and seek the truth for yourself. There is so much truth to be learned. We're gonna be doing White It Out Part 3, as I mentioned. And in that, we're going to uncover some of the, the many buried facts of Christianity and this whole culture of religion. And hopefully you won't reject knowledge because that's all we're trying to do. We've done a lot of research and we're continuing to do research. And we're just trying to make the way uh, faster for you because some of you aren't going to go and do this research. Of course, once we present the information, you can research what we've presented and try to prove it wrong, verify it right, whatever you want to do. But 
by all means, don't sit on it and do nothing and just keep defending something that you don't have facts to defend. Most of you defend stuff based on emotions. You say, well, the Christian church did this for me. It did that for you. It ain't did nothing for you. Because if you took that title Christian and you called it Smishjan or Witchjan, whatever you want to call it, it would have still been the same thing. It doesn't matter what you title it. There was a foundation to Christianity. And all we're saying is find out what the foundation is. And then serve the Father from there. You don't have to call yourself a Christian in order to serve the Father. Because the Most High wasn't. I mean, Yahshua wasn't a Christian. The disciples weren't Christians. You hear what I'm saying? The prophets of old weren't Christians. So if they weren't Christians, tell me, explain to me why you got to be one in order to make it in. Huh? Can you do that? Okay. Again, I'm not trying to bash anyone. I'm trying to get you to understand that we're not off into some crazy new religion. Y'all, Some of y'all look at the things that we, we wear our hair wrapped on. Are they gone now? So I'm gone because I kept covering my head. I mean, that's a bunch of foolishness, y'all. What I wear ain't got nothing to do with religion. It got something to do with me saying, you know what? I want to cover myself up, okay? I want my daughters to cover themselves up. It's, it's kind of funny. Someone did a meme where they were showing um, women in the Middle East all covered up. Now, I'm not saying we're going to cover up in all of the things that they cover up in, you know, although I do like some of their styles. Um, they showed a meme where the, the Middle Eastern women were looking over at the American women saying, oh, I, I feel sorry for them. They're, they're men. Let them walk around like that, and they, they don't have blah, blah, blah. And then you have the American women in bikinis, two-piece bikinis, full body displayed, ex you know, except the little piece that the bikini covers up. And they were saying, oh, look at those poor women. Their men oppressed them so bad that they have to stay covered up. And I said to myself, this is a bunch of foolishness right here. You got women who are wearing thongs in public, okay, thongs and barely got their breasts covered up, walking around bearing all of their flesh. And they're saying that these women over here are being treated wrong. You're treated, being treated like a piece of flesh. Nobody's gonna respect that, okay? But you think that because somebody covers up that, it, that they're some type of religious fanatic. That's the backwardness of Christianity that I'm talking about that it got you calling good evil and evil good. It's wrong for me to want my daughters to dress up, but you want your daughters to dress like little little street walkers, little tramps, and that's okay because you're letting them express themselves. Uh, here's another point I'm going to make too. That same older sister that I said something about young women, how they dress in church and everything, I asked her this. I said, so if you have a church full of people, which includes children, little boys and little girls. And the pastor decides he's going to walk up in there in some biker shorts and deliver his sermon. Not behind the podium or anything, just right out there in the open. He got some biker shorts on. And he's going to deliver the message. And you got all these kids, teenagers, young women, married women, single women, all of them. And she said, nope, I don't think they should put them out. You're supposed to come. The Bible says, come as you are. I said, the Bible don't say come as you are. This is something y'all just throwing out there and you're, you're twisting his word up to justify sin. And I said, the fact that you can't admit that it's wrong for a man to come walk, walking in the church dressed in biker shorts or a woman to come with a thong on in the church, the fact that you can't admit that it's wrong, it shows that you have a heart problem. And this is why the church is such a mess and it's causing so many people's lives to be shipwrecked to this day. And many of these are the reasons why I'm not a Christian. I have more. I can't give it all to you because I would be standing out here a long time if I tried to give you every last reason why I'm no longer a Christian. But much of what I told you of what's going on in the Christian church, what they're promoting, what they're pushing, and what they frown upon, the hypocrisy was just too much for me. I couldn't take it anymore. Okay, and I'm not claiming to be perfect. I still have a long way to go myself. But what I will say is that my heart and my desire is to do the will of my father. And my desire is to give the truth to his people concerning whatever it is that he wants me to speak on. 
Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this video, but I pray that nobody took so much offense to what I'm saying that they're not going to research Christianity, but that you would take heed and start to study to show yourself approved unto Yah before you fall off of this train, before you get derailed with this train.